the day that I was hired by a very talented man named Irwin Allen. A strange, talented man who was humorless, totally without humor. Can you fancy that? Oh, I, st I study them all because it keeps you on an even keel. You can live through it. I study them all. All of them I study. And uh, what, what comes out is fascinating. My then agent, whose name escapes me at the moment, <laughs> called up one day, 1962. Two, was it? Yeah, I think. Five? Sixty-five. Well, that's when we, that's when we opened. Okay. Um, and said, Urban Allen is doing a television series at 20th Century Fox. I said, who is Urban Allen? You don't know? I said, no, I don't. Lost in Space is the name. And he wants to see film on you. Well, you know what that means. I said, what's the part? Well, I don't know, said Mr. Tempest. I said, well, then you tell Mr. Allen that I hesitate to show film unless I know what the part is. Oh, well, he's not going to like that. And I said, fuck him. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. He called back in about 10 minutes. Irvin Allen wants to know who the hell you think you are and he'll see you at 4 o'clock. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I said, Okay. So I got myself gussied up and went to 20th Century Fox, which was my favorite um, movie studio because that was my first series at Fox. And uh, they directed me to his office. And there was a secretary. Her name was Margaret. And she said, in there. So I walked in there, and there was this strange-looking man sitting at a huge table, surrounded by about 20 yes-men. I was already terrified. <laughs> I hadn't opened my mouth, except when I did say good afternoon. And he said, the famous finger, which lived through three and a half years of my life, and that uh, one day I knew I was going to bite off, and I never did, thank God. <laughs> Who do you think you are? No film. I, was, I found myself doing this. Well, Mr. Allen, I said, uh, uh, why would you want to see possibly the wrong film when you can see the real thing? Me. And he turned to what turned out to be one of the head men, Frank LaTourette. And he said, what did he say, Frank? And Frank said, why do you want to see the wrong film? You can see the real thing, him. Irvin said, oh, you want to be in this series? Now, this is verbatim. I said, well, 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 well I, I don't, don't know. I haven't read a script. What did he say, La Tourette? He hasn't read a script. Somebody give him a script. Somebody gave me a script. I was holding a script. I don't know where it came from. And I said, uh, may I ask, Mr. Allen, who is in this piece? He said, I know where you're going. We've already done the pilot. You were not in it. Your character was not in it. I said, oh, may we discuss billing? Ah, billing. Everybody's billed. Everybody's billed. It's already contracted in the contract. You'll have to be last. I said, I'm afraid I would not be comfortable <laughs> that way. What did he say, Lauterette? He's not comfortable. Well, somebody make him comfortable. But I really. He said, you go home and you read those scripts that you've been given. And you call me up and solve this billing problem. I'm busy. Out. 
I was determined not to back out or fall down, but I almost did. I, uh, I was like that. A strange man. In my whole career, I never experienced anybody like that. I went home, read the scripts, two they had given me, and uh, I liked them. I thought, not that I liked them, I thought, this is good, this is going to work. And it's a marvelous part, this villain, terrible villain. He told me when I first was meeting with him that the pilot had been shot without me because the character didn't exist. There was no change. The part that I was given to play was a terrible spy villain. Already we were in trouble because I hated him. I not only hated him, but I said, oh, five shows and I'm out. They're going to have to kill me. Unemployed again? No, really, that is what I said. I said, this man is, is, is hideous because it got progressively worse, you see. And I don't want to do that because they'll fire me. They have to. I called my friend Jimmy, who was head of casting at NBC. Thank God. And I said, did you ever give Billy? This had come to me. Special guest star every week. Did you ever give Billy like that when you cast a series? He said, what are you, crazy? Of course not. There is no such billing. Nobody gets billing like that. I said, that's all I need to know. So I called Irwin, and I said, I've solved your billing problem. Yeah, yeah, well, talk fast, busy. I'm busy, I'm busy all the time, you know. I said, I will accept last billing. Special guest star, Jonathan Harris, every week. Well, you should have heard him. I never heard such cursing and screaming. And you stupid bastards, none of you can act anyway. You're not a good actor. None of you are, are a good actor. I don't have to put up with this crap. I just sat there and on and on and on. And then, okay, and he hung up. <laughs> I laughed for about a week. 